Hi guys, good day. This is Marriage Alive, another wonderful segment. And today, Denrick and Quasi Let, we are the hosts. We will be interviewing Auntie Stephanie and Uncle Cullis. Now, we have a question for them. So, what are some good reasons for getting married today? Uncle Cullis, um, one more question concerning that, right? What would you say to the young lady, right? Remember you said unconditional, right? Yeah. What would you say to the young lady who saw yeah. her mother having to live under strenuous relationship conditions, abuse? And she says to herself, I'm not taking that. When you say abuse, you mean like overworked? That's, like yeah. No, I'm not talking about like abuse that you... Like physical abuse. Like physical abuse. I mean like... um. Well, we understand it. That's a different parameter, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm yes. talking about the things that my mother was going to take. Yeah. I'm not taking that. I'm yeah. not sitting not down not bare feet and pregnant so home that and all that yes. kind of stuff. So, what do you say to that? Okay, I say let us let us um let's go back to some what I call some some basics. Right. And I always like Genesis. I always like Genesis chapter two, which God says. It is not good that man should live alone. Mm -hmm. And when he said man in that context, it's also not good that woman should live alone. And therefore, before you set out to say what type of man you should get married to, is let us start off by being the type of woman God would want me to be, right? Mm -hmm. So my first thing is because the being the type of woman that God wants me to be will attract a certain type of man but it will also repel like a particular that. type of man. That's right. Yeah. Right? So what, we, what we're what saying then is that as a woman, right, or as a man, again, my first connection is with God. And therefore, when you are getting to know somebody, let us, let us see how does that person behave? How does that person react? Not only in the physical, but also their relationship with God, right? Okay. So... If I know the person wants, is going to be cutting corners and, and doing schemey things, right? I'm saying, is that the person who I want to be my wife or my husband? Or is this the type of person I will want to be the, the, one of, the father or mother of my children? And therefore, again, they come back and you test according to the scriptures. And one of the things I, 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 I like about the scriptures is that in the book of um, Sam, it says, you know, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the word of God, right? Or thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I read the scriptures and, 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 I, re and I read the book of um, Ruth, for example, right? And, and I think of Ruth and I think of Boaz. And I think of how Boaz treated Ruth, right? Is that he made sure that one, even before they were married, right? that she was protected, she felt safe with him. He, <laughs> he provided for her, even before they were married, he provided for her, right? And the next thing too is that, and I know, and I, I, know I might get into trouble for this, eh? <laughs> Boaz, Boaz pursued Ruth, right? Exactly. Pursued Ruth, it wasn't Ruth pursuing Pursuit. Boaz. Sure. Okay, right, and and those are the things that 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 we want to see, right? That a woman should be saying, "You see me, Lord, I live my life for you." And if a man comes along, I will have this yardstick, which is God's yardstick, because this is what I want to see in the individual as we get to know each other. But one of the things that she should not be prepared to do is, as we were starting off early on, that says, "You already know." I want to get mine because I'm getting older again, pressure from home or yeah. any one of those things. Hmm. I want to get married because God has designed my life and it is maybe that time. And there's nothing wrong in growing old and single if God has given you the gift. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But each one of us has his or her um, path mm -hmm. to, to walk. Mm -hmm. Once we are doing it in conformity with what God says, and God blesses blesses the individual. Okay. Mm. 
Stephen. <laughs> the parallels in Ephesians chapter 5 yeah. in Christ and the church. Oh, yeah, the question. <laughs> <All right>, so... <laughs> Oh, that, that was nice help to yeah, yeah. hang out with. You know, God so loved the church that he sacrificed himself for the church. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the parallel there is husband must love his wife just like Christ loved the church and sacrificed for the church. Because the husband, as being part of the church, he would have received love from God, from mm -hmm. Christ. Yes. Right? So he would have been nurtured and strengthened and encouraged in God's love and built up in God's love. And he is to have the love of Christ to be able to love his wife. And that kind of love that a man will give to a wife, it eliminates a lot of fears and problems that the, let's say a woman who's thinking about all that happened with her parents, all yeah, of some of that, yeah. it just went away. Mm -hmm. Because the love of the husband is so genuine and pure and he so cares for you like Christ cares for the church. Mm. And that is the kind of love. It's like, if fear, it's like if fear is replaced with trust. That is it. Yeah. And sometimes you have insecurity because mm -hmm. the person is not, but you feel secure in Christ. Yeah. Good. He, he does everything well for you. Yeah. And the husband is the head of the, the, his bride, just as Christ is the head of the church. And here we're talking to about submission. Right. Just as hmm. Christ, just as <laughs> church submits to Christ in everything, mm -hmm. the wife is told in Ephesians chapter 6, in five, to submit to husband in everything. Mm -hmm. I, right? don't, I don't know if we will, we will end with, with, if you begin to talk about submission, but I, I will listen, I will listen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't have a problem with it, but I know some people yeah, yeah, they who don't understand it. A, a lot of yeah. people, and it is natural in women mm -hmm. to have problem with submission. In fact, it is natural in mankind right. to have problem with mm -hmm. submission. And because of all stories, and sometimes men are living up to their calling and all of that, right. it is natural <laughs> that women are going to have some fears about the submission. Mm -hmm. But what a woman needs to do is to put all those fears in God's hand because right. she's not only submitting, she's not submitting to her husband because he's perfect. Mm -hmm. She's submitting to him because of the, he is her authority as a head because of his position. If she gets out of that, it becomes dangerous. Right. Her heart, her heart's desire now, women are not going to be perfect, I'm one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be 100% um, <laughs> um, submissive. Yeah. Looking at it, okay? Mm -hmm. Work <laughs> in <I'm>, progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress. You see, yeah. when you think about it, marriage represents the submission we have to, to Christ. Right. Are you perfect in your submission to Christ? No, no. Or is it an ongoing process from glory to glory? Yes. yes. Good. And so it is, you must understand that a woman has to learn that submission step by step from glory to glory. And more and more as the husband demonstrates his love towards her, the submission becomes easier. But the woman must have the heart mm -hmm. to want to submit and God uses that. And as the years and time goes, she becomes better and better. The marriage becomes better and better. And submission becomes easier. I, I just, I just wanted to easier. add to that. I remember in the last last month, the peers were saying that you know that submission, that relationship, is not a military type of submission; it's a biological. Oh, okay. You know, yes. so there's mutual benefit there too. You know, that's right. Mm -hmm. you know, and and one of the things we also need to add to is that when we talk about submission, um, we we pull it out from Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-two. But mm -hmm. it, actually, we should go one verse before that, Ephesians yeah. five twenty one, which says, "Submit to one another out of right. reverence for like Christ." Yeah. 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 Submit yeah. one to another. So yeah. yes, so God has given me a role that I need to play in the, in any family yeah. in right. marriage, but God has also said to that a hey, same God who says wives submit also said to um husbands okay. love your wife which is a mm -hmm. sort of a submission to it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it really be done. So 
I cannot come and say, I'm the boss here. Do what right. I say. Okay, because that is not demonstrating the love. That is not the mm-hmm. way Christ is. Christ is, 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 is like a perfect gentleman in, in Revelation chapter 3. It says he stands at the door and knocks, right? He doesn't push himself in. He doesn't violate anyone, mm-hmm. right? He is there and he's begging and pleading. He's asking, he's, he, he's talking, he's requesting. He's, mm-hmm. he's the perfect gentleman. And Christ is our example as men. Another, another parallel to this, Christ sanctifies or saves the church by the washing of the word. Mm-hmm. He sends the word to heal the church, to make the church holy and throw the church in white in Revelation. The bride is clothed in, in white. So a husband is supposed to use the word yes. regularly to pray for his wife, read the word to her, speak to her. Anytime I have a, most times when we have problems with marriages, and, we, mm-hmm. and the couple comes in and we ask about that portion. Are you washing the wife with the word and reading the word for her? They can, a, a lot of time. Yeah, the, the, head drop. Yeah, the head drops. Yeah. Because you want a perfect, you want a, a good wife. Christ wants a good wife. So what does yeah. he do? He sacrifices, he teaches, he empowers. I want a good wife. So what do I do? Mm-hmm. I teach her from the word, show her from the word scripture, pray for her. And love her up into just like me saying that Christ loves her. And when you when you come to me, when a man complaining a lot, not in every case about his wife, sometimes it speaks about the himself. What what, mm-hmm. what are you really doing here, boy? Yeah. <laughs> are you putting in the work? Exactly. Okay. Yes. And, well, we just wanted to end with, um, you know, like, is, is there a benefit to the wider society, you know, in terms of being married and remaining married, you know, like, how does it in any way positively affect, you know, society? I know you mentioned, okay. you know, kids, it's good for them to grow up with that framework, yeah. any other benefits? That's right. Okay, so, so, so a couple of things, right? Um, I'll make the statement that marriage is really the bedrock of society. Show me a society with godly marriages, right? And I will show, show you a well functioning society, but show me a society with no godly marriages and I will show you a dysfunctional society because in a society like that, anything goes. All right. There's nothing new under the sun. And when God established the family in Genesis, in Genesis chapter two, Immediately in Genesis chapter three, the enemy attacks it, right? Because he's attacking the family. And the consequences of of his attack in Genesis chapter three is that in Genesis chapter four, you have the first murder, right? And we we need to understand that that societies without strong laws of principles that support marriages will, without strong laws and principles that support marriages, they will deteriorate, right? when God said it is not good that man should be alone, or as Psalm 68 verse 6 says, he puts the solitary in families, it is for a reason. God mm-hmm. is the designer and he knows why he instituted and he put, gives us the institution of marriage, right? Um, so the institution of marriage is really basic to any society in which we live. It is the strength of the nation, it is the strength of culture, mm-hmm. and it is in the family that we learn certain things. Okay, it is in this family that we learn the principles of love, of sacrifice, of hard work, of forgiveness, of kindness, right? Mm -hmm. And if we go into the wider society, those are some of the factors that help us as a nation to be a strong family. Mm -hmm. If I love my wife, right, I'm not going to go outside there and do things that's dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. To endanger her. Mm -hmm. So that's why I mask up when I when I go outside. Okay. And a godly marriage is really supposed to be a safe place eh, for a husband and a wife and later on the family to enjoy the life successes as well as to work through its difficulties. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying that a marriage will be perfect as Stephanie said earlier Mm -hmm. on, eh? but when those difficult times come, how then do we respond, right? We could either fight to make it right or we could flight. We could just decide to run away. Mm Our marriage is not a winner takes all, okay? 
it is not one in which part, okay, it is one in which part I always have to remember that my spouse is not my enemy, right? right? And I'm thinking about this as, as a, about the reason for getting married. Mm -hmm. um, it's no use Stephanie and I having a fight outside in the kitchen. And then when we step into the bedroom, I have this kind of smile on my face, you know? <laughs> right? It's not that. Okay, it, okay. It, we always have to remember that we work things out and we work things out so that God gets the glory. God must be glorified by our marriage. Right. Okay. So if I am not, and uh, if we are not glorifying God by how we live and how we act, therefore society will be will be all the worst faith. It will be negatively affected. Right. So when we have the scripture verse. Um, if my people who are called by my name, okay? It really speaks towards the, the, the sanctity of marriage also, okay? Mm -hmm. Because giving up your, acknowledging your sin and putting it away is acknowledging that I need to do what God wants me to do. So again, so the question that they ask, is there any good for society for people to get married? Yeah. Yes, there's a good for society, but it's even better to have godly marriages right. that will bring honor and glory to God and provide the framework for children to grow up for the next generation. Amen. And the legacy yeah. continues. Yeah. The legacy yeah. continues. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, thanks so much for your time and really your experience it. in this field. You know, I feel like if we have been gifted yeah. with a lot of knowledge going forward in our own marriage, I'm sure a lot of other couples will feel the same way. And even those who are more so who are thinking about getting married, why they should get married you know so thanks yes. so much yes. thank you thank you god bless all right take two okay